What's up guys? Welcome back to the series. My name is HeJ, your coach for network security. In the previous video, we talked about firewalls. We've known that firewalls can protect your network from inside threats and that leads us to this discussion. In this video, we'll talk about the recent events, specifically about the ongoing COVID-19 pandemic, its impact on network infrastructure and cybersecurity. How does endpoint protection plays its role during these times? I will also share the things that are currently happening in the live production networks para dun sa mga nag upskill currently aspiring to move into network engineering or network security, and also for students and fresh graduates. Let's start with the network infrastructure. There is an increase in network traffic most probably right now nasa bahay ka working or studying typical office meetings are now being conducted using video conferencing kapag ikaw naman ay walang ginagawa since di tayo makalabas you'll resort into using video on demand services these are like netflix hbo sama mo na din yung mga mahilig mag live stream when it comes to gaming we also use video chat or video calling applications to check on our friends and families. Now, these services or apps are bandwidth huggers. They could cause network slowdowns, lags, and even dropped connections. If you have a fiber connection or you are within an area na malakas ang wireless broadband signal, good for you, but still, your network performance would still depend on the number of your users and also if they are using it at the same time. For businesses and corporate organizations, napaka-crucial ng network performance and availability. Nung nagsimula yung pandemic, napakaraming VPN tickets since working from home became the new norm. These past few days, napapansin ko na puro network performance-related issues na yung mga tickets. Nandyan yung slowness, dropped connections, latency, meron din mga outages. With this, I can say that the pandemic exposed the outdated cabling infrastructure by different service providers around the world. Kaya ngayon, kabi-kabila yung mga maintenance notifications na makikita mo. Kadalasan, it's about upgrading or replacing an equipment within a data center or a central office. Punta naman tayo sa cybersecurity. I can say that by far, these are the times na napakadali man loko ng tao. Mabenta ngayon yung mga phishing sites containing articles about the cure or vaccine for the coronavirus. Andyan din yung mga spam emails na kunwari galing sa mga banking institutions asking you to update your information, leading you to bogus websites, asking you to fill out a form, and it would definitely cause you problems. Sad to say, that not everyone is vigilant or aware that these schemes exist and people that are currently working from home are becoming the number one target of these cyber attacks. Bago natin pag-usapan ang endpoint protection, alamin muna natin yung mga reasons why it needs to be in place, especially across a corporate network. Lack of visibility refers to the inability of corporate organizations to monitor each device within their network. Gullible end users. Let's focus on those that are working from home. Hindi naman lahat ng nag-work from home ay techie or tech-savvy person. And as I mentioned earlier, the lack of awareness to cybersecurity threats is always a major concern. Vulnerable endpoints refers to the loopholes that can be exploited on your end devices. It could be an outdated software or operating system, or even simply leaving your computer unlocked and exposed to people that could possibly initiate a cyber attack. Now, endpoint protection is an approach of protection applied to end devices within a computer network. Ang pinaka Keyword natin dito is compliance to standards. These are the parameters defined by an organization for every end-user device that they have within their network. 
Endpoint protection can have three elements. These are the endpoint compliance, secure remote access, and network controls. Let's discuss it one by one. Endpoint compliance refers to the restrictions applied to end devices. Andyan yung di ka pwede gumamit ng USB sticks, memory cards, or even Bluetooth to copy or save files to your computers. Your user profile defines kung ano ba yung mga changes na pwede mong gawin sa computer mo. Allowed ka ba mag-install ng programs, mag-view ng registry, or modify the registry, etc. Up-to-date operating systems is also a part of this compliance since this update serves as a fix to bugs or security flaws within the operating system. UEM or Unified Endpoint Management. Basically, ito yung mga programs na makikita mo on your system tray if you are using a corporate computer. It could be McAfee, Symantec. These programs usually provides an all-in-one solution like acting as antivirus software. Check for software inventory. Analyzes if these programs are supposed to be in your computer or not. For me, the things that you see right now on your screen is the proactive side of endpoint protection, meaning you put these things in place to anticipate any inappropriate activities by your end users. Now that you have the endpoint compliance in place, you need a secure remote access to your corporate network. And this is where VPN clients comes in. Fortinet has their own Forti client that supports two-factor authentication for additional access security. For the benefit of those that are not familiar how two-factor authentication works, here's how it goes. You incorporate the use of secure ID tokens. These tokens requires you to set up a PIN and that becomes something that you know. The token generates codes that changes every 60 seconds, which becomes something that you have. That is the concept of two-factor authentication. You log in with something that you know plus something that you have. Di gaya ng traditional login na merong username and password which are static values. Two-factor authentication added a dynamic element in the form of tokens, a value that changes frequently, making it way much secure when it comes to authentication. Now, can this be broken or penetrated given that it is a two-factor authentication? Well, it is possible if someone is able to know your user ID and PIN and by any means He's also able to steal your token. He can use your credentials to log in or authenticate within the network. As a network security engineer, what can you do about it? Two things. Reactively, you can disable the user's profile on the firewall to deny the unauthorized access. Number two, proactively, you can lock down the MAC address of the authorized user's computer para yung authorized device lang yung pwede mag-authenticate. Wala pa man yung ganitong incident, you already have a security measure in place. If in case your organization is not into two-factor authentication, you can use your Active Directory credentials to establish VPN connection. Compatible din si Forti Client with the most commonly used servers like Takax, Reduce, and LDAP. The last element is the network control. In endpoint protection's perspective, network control is the parameters defined on the firewall for your end users. On Jan Yung web filtering, you deny or allow access to certain websites. Application control, you also allow or deny a traffic based on the application generating the traffic and you determine that with the use of port numbers. Data leak prevention. You set rules and policies restricting your end users from sending out sensitive data outside your network. You determine this data based on their file types. It could be doc, PDF, JPEG, MP4, or whatever file type that might contain 
sensitive data or confidential information about your organization. When we talk about authentication, best example na pwede dito is yung tinatawag na unusual end user behavior. So ano yun? To be specific, let's say, there's a remote user. Ang pasok niya is 8am to 5pm, Monday to Friday. You can expect that there would be access logs for the specific days and time. Let's say suddenly, you saw access logs beyond those times and day. Say for example, someone is accessing the network at around 9pm to 1am and it is being done on the weekend. For a network security engineer, this is a red flag. What you can do is further investigate if this is a legitimate work-related activity. You also have the option to restrict the end users from establishing VPN connections during the times that they are not supposed to. Kanina sinabi ko na endpoint compliance is the proactive side of endpoint protection since compliance was put in place to anticipate the end users from doing inappropriate stuff. Dito naman sa network controls, I consider this as the reactive part. Reactive in a way that you respond to any change that could affect the security of your network. There will always be new URLs that needs to be added on your web filter database. Whether you allow or deny those new URLs is still unknown. Yung mga applications na ginagamit nyo, say for example, Zoom. Previously, you are using it. Now that there was a breach to privacy, your response is to deny any Zoom-related traffic on your network. Now it's time for us to have a recap of our discussion. I've shared to you the impact of COVID-19 to network infrastructure and cybersecurity. Our main topic is the endpoint protection. You've known its relevance these days, and we've known how it works by knowing its elements which are endpoint compliance, secure remote access, and network control. I hope you've enjoyed watching this presentation. If you have any questions about this topic, you can join our Facebook group. It's Fortinet NSE Study Group PH. And you can post your questions on that group. Once again, on behalf of White Logic IT Training Solutions, I'm EJ. Stay home and stay safe. Thank you for watching.